Hi, I'm Nella, artist and designer. And I realized I haven't shared any sketchbook tours with you in years. And I have several sketchbooks that I've completed over the past few years that I can share with you right now. And I'll be doing that in this video and two upcoming videos that are coming out very soon. So brace yourself for that. And today's video is dedicated to this tiny moleskin watercolor notebook that I've been using from 2012 until 2017. That's quite a long stretch of time, but it's not my record. <laughs> You'll see my record in one of the next videos. Uh, and it's interesting because since that's such a long time span, you can see a bit of an evolution of how I started out working in watercolor and, and what it turned out into in the last months of using that. Uh, so that could be interesting. And also I want to make a note before we get into the flip through part uh, that the central spread of the sketchbook is right now it's missing uh, because I sold it to a friend who really liked that uh, sketch um, so that's why it's gone now but I recorded it before I did that so the first half of the video contains that sketch you're gonna see that in the video and then I recorded the second part later after I completed the entire sketchbook. So you might see a cut in between uh, where the two recordings meet. Uh, those both recordings are pretty old by now. So the quality, especially the sound quality is not that great. Um, I mean, sorry for that. Uh, I don't want to do another recording all over again because it was pretty long as is. Uh, but just to let you know that the quality is going to be a little lesser than what you might be used to uh, from my recent videos. Uh, but I thank you for your patience and for your interest. And now let's go dive in and see what's inside. So here's the first work from 2012, um, which is the city of the clock tower and i drew this one from uh the actually the roof of the neighboring building which has a really beautiful view over the entire uh, old town so i like to go there and sketch when i have a chance actually I haven't been there in a really long time so as you can see and you'll notice in a lot of my these old uh works uh i had a lot of trouble mixing colors because all these are very very light and they're not really vibrant as I believe watercolors should be so I was just learning how to how to use watercolor and mix them so this is used um, drawn using a brush pen a fine liner and watercolor kit uh, these are some portraits I did during a sketch crawl. So a sketch crawl is basically where you go around the town and draw buildings and people and stuff. So uh, these uh, two women were with me and that sketch crawl. Okay, so the top one actually looks a bit better. And the bottom one is barely visible. I'm not sure if you can make out the features because it's also, again, very, very light. Uh, this is one of my favorites, actually. Uh, it's the pier in Nyeka. Uh, so what happened here is that I was just running out of ink. So in my brush pen. And so these uh, ink lines are really rugged and have this um, interesting texture. Let's see if it will focus. And I really love that. It really gives this uh, sketch this, I don't know, a little industrial feeling as it should be. And this was totally accidental. So I love when things like that happen. I wasn't happy when I figured out I was running out of ink, but I think it, it turned out pretty well. <laughs> okay, so this this one is a terrible one. Uh, I tried to do this, do this cloudy sky and the gray sea that looked really pale. But in the end, you can't really see anything. So that's the cityscape from seen from the pier. And I don't think you can get a really good idea what the city looks like from this painting. Uh, this 
One is also drawn from that rooftop. Uh, it's the St. Vitus Cathedral. And this is uh, my, actually my friend's yard and, and some cottage that she has uh, where we're celebrating her birthday. And this one is drawn using uh, watercolor uh, pencils. So you can see there's a bit of lines and texture there that you don't get with pure watercolor paint. Uh, this is a bottle of Orangina that I drawn when I was waiting for my bus. And this is the pier in my hometown where I used to live, where I go every summer uh, on my vacation. And that's the beach bar and the sea. And I'm really pleased with how this one turned out. So that one was from 2012 also. Okay. Uh, these were also from that summer. So these are some flowers on my parents' balcony. I'm learning how to do the paint a little stronger. And this is uh, the grill for a barbecue that my dad built. So these are starting to look more like it. Uh, this is the beach view. There's a lot of beach views in this one. And this is the portrait of my boyfriend on the beach. Also very pale. Oh, this is one of my favorites too. So this is, uh, okay, so you'll just have to turn your head because it, it doesn't fit. So it's really, really difficult to find motifs that fit in this really strong vertical view. And this is one of them. So this is the little monastery downtown in Yeka and the little pine branches poking out from the side. So I did that uh, during my lunch break while I was still uh, employed in my last job. So, huh. And uh, there's no year, but that was, uh, I think that was late 2012 or early 2013. Uh, this is the cityscape as seen from my friend's balcony. Again, with the pale colors. Uh, this is some decoration on a street lamp or a house lamp on some villa or villa. How are you pronounce it? Um, okay, a little quiche, but I, I like painting statues because they don't move at all and they don't complain if they don't look right in the end. And this is a beautiful snowy uh, landscape. Uh, when I was at a yoga retreat, that was my view from the, from the room where I was settled. So um, it's really difficult to paint snow, obviously, uh, but I think I did rather well. The view was just gorgeous, so I had to try it. So it's ink and a bit of light blue watercolor. An orchid flower, which is again, very pale, so you can barely make it out and another beach scene with a woman, sorry about that, a woman reading something and she didn't notice that I was catching her, which is nice. Uh, this is the beach bar where I like to go to drink coffee when I'm on my vacation. And this is the view at the mountain, actually several mountains nearby where I live. Uh, and this is the view from the gas station, believe it or not. So there's this little gas station with the gorgeous view over the entire bay. And I like to go there and sketch sometimes. 
Okay, so this one is actually, it's not obviously not from observation. So I haven't been using the sketchbook for a long time uh, because as I mentioned, I use it primarily for, for works from observation and I just wasn't inspired and I wasn't going anywhere nice. So I decided, screw it, I'm just going to paint anything. And I painted this lady, actually, I painted the background and just uh, drew some doodles over her hair. So that's basically what it is. Okay, this one, uh, this one is one of my favorites. It sounds like all of them are my favorites, but trust me, they're not. So there's just a few that I really like. Uh, this is the view again in my old hometown. And the scene itself wasn't so interesting, but then this uh, uh, this boat appeared. That's, that's some kind of old antique sailboat. And that was really cool. So I just tried to draw this scene as I saw it. It was moving really fast. By the time I was finished with the painting, it was already up here. So I just had to use my imagination to fill in the details. Uh, yeah, I really like this one. And the colors are as they should be, which I guess means I'm finally learning how to use watercolor properly. So this is from, from 2016. Yeah, and these two are also from 2016. Okay, so this one, I just get a close up of this one. Okay. So this is um, some people on the beach and really, really pale mountains and sea. Probably too pale. All watercolor. And we're back with the rest of the sketchbook. So here on the left, we have a little quick study of rocks on the beach towel and the rocks I'm pretty pleased with how they turn out I think they really have these kind of 3D-ish look uh, to them uh, with all these uh, yellow and beige and brown tones but the towel was just a mess so that one is would say half a success and here to the right there is a study of rocks on the beach. Actually, these are, I think, cement blocks. Uh, that's a jumping board. Actually, it used to be a jumping board. Now it's just a pile of rocks. And that's on the local beach where I go, uh, usually in the summer. I'm just trying to show you the subtle uh, blue shade of the sky because I think because of the light being so strong here uh, it's not showing up right so I'm trying to find the best angle that could show you kind of the all the subtle tones but of course it's really hard to get that through video uh, but this is a study that I'm quite pleased with even though it's a very simple motif but sometimes you can learn a lot about a technique by using a very simple motive. Uh, so this spread, uh, to the left we have a little a piece of lettering which I did with, uh, we might call them felt tip brush markers. I don't know why is it not focusing. Could you please focus? Yeah, I don't know, it's not working. Hopefully that catches it. So, uh, that was just an experiment with felt tip markers. I don't usually do them. I don't usually use felt tip markers. I was just trying to see if that might work for my style of lettering, but then I went back to brush pens and brushes and other stuff. It's just not really my kind of thing, but I think this was um, pretty interesting. And it was featured on the Calligraphscape Instagram channel. Uh, so. That was cool. And here on the right, we have a study of my hometown. So when I say my hometown, I mean the place where I grew up on the island Kirk, which is uh, the name 
of the island. And that's a study of a scene in at dusk. So uh, the sun has just set and the sky has a little purplish, uh, pinkish color, uh, like a peach color. And you can see a bit of reflection in that in the sea too. So basically I'm trying to get these uh, tones of the color colors of the sea and the sky and all the other the vegetation but I mean it's really hard <laughs> so I'm not sure if I did, did that right uh, but I think it has, a, it has a lot of contrast it has a lot of uh, uh, between the darks and, uh, and the lights so that at least turned out right and here uh, is an experiment which looks kind of cool. Uh, that is colored ink that I applied on a wet surface. So it's a wet and wet technique. And uh, I used shades of blue and purple violet ink. And where these two colors meet, there's a bit of a white mist or a white edge. And it looks like, uh, like a nebula in, in space, which is really cool. So that's, that took me maybe five minutes, but it looks, it looks really great. And that's it. I just let it like that. I, I thought maybe to paint on some stars or something, but I decided to leave it like this. And this is another uh, seascape study. Uh, this is a rocky beach and... Um, just try to use you know a couple of tones not do too much detail just try to get the feeling of the beach uh, with the fewest colors possible okay so now you can see like the perspective correct perspective but when I put it like this the colors are a bit more accurate I don't know maybe if I turn the light in a different way it might be a bit better okay no that kind of too gets too much glare Maybe it's better now. So here I'm kind of getting, getting the hang of the, the colors. My colors uh, in watercolor are getting much stronger than they used to be in the beginning. And I mean, this is 2016. So the beginning of the sketchbook was in 2012, I think. So that's, a, that's a quite a long time. <laughs> okay, so this study was not a huge success. Uh, this is... Uh, like an old factory that is not really being used to its full potential here and that's the view from from a beach and I don't really I'm not really happy with how it all turned out it's very very bland the colors are bland and the silhouette is not quite strong so moving on uh, this one I just figured I should keep this close to the camera maybe so you could see better and I'll try not to shake it too much Hope that's okay. Uh, so this is another view on the beach. A little young oak tree sprouting from the seaside and a bit of rocks and sea and, and uh, other stuff through the branches. So I'm really happy with the colors and, and the really deep shadows here. I think I'm getting a bit... I was getting a bit more confident with applying very, very dark tones just straight out and not trying to, you know, muck about with very, very sensitive strokes. And now if you're wondering what this is, so this happened later because some when I, I carry this notebook in a bag uh, with a wet towel and a bottle of water and whatever, and sometimes water touches of the sketchbooks in inconvenient places and then the stuff that was on the other page gets through and that's pretty much what living with with a sketchbook is it's not always perfect uh, it sometimes things get messy I mean there's a, a lot of stuff here that you know got through the pages and I just tried uh, to live with it because um, you can't keep it pristine it just it just doesn't work if you're carrying it around with you. If you keep it just at home, then of course it it might be um, 
you know, really nice and, and tidy. But if you are carrying it around, especially like me, you're carrying it out in nature or on the beach, then stuff happens. So this was another kind of wet and wet technique with uh, violet ink, where I just applied this wet ink into a wet, on a wet surface. And then I did these little mandalas with a white gel pen. So that's kind of the story with this one. And here I did a very kind of light profile, not a lot of detail. It's a profile of a, some kind of a character, a female character with flowing hair. And this is watercolor, but it's not wet and wet because I was afraid I was going to mess up this profile. I was not using masking a fluid in this one. I was just doing the straight on, uh, you know, painting with, uh, with watercolor. So I was trying to be really careful around here and here. That's why these colors don't blend so nicely. So I think it would be look, uh, look very, um, would look much better if I was using wet and wet technique here, but I did not, I still didn't realize how to use masking. I think I, I wasn't just, uh, I wasn't realizing how useful masking fluid is at the time. And I had some stars and that's it. So, okay, this spread is not quite as interesting as some other ones. So I'm just gonna go through that one. So this spread is not quite as interesting. Uh, this one did not turn out right. It's just, again, another beach scene, but looks kind of blah. And this, another wet and wet technique with ink, this time blue and green ink. At least I think it's ink. It's really hard to get colors this strong with watercolor, so I'm pretty sure this is ink. Uh, and, um, I don't know. I probably wanted to do something else to this one, but I just didn't bother. So moving on. Uh, this is another full spread with the background done in ink, some shades of blue and violet. And then I went over it with white markers. So there is, maybe there's a bit of gel pen. I'm not exactly sure. It's been a long time. So I, don't know what kind of tools I've been using on, unless there are some very, very recognizable markers. So I know these are, these are paint markers, the, the lines that are a bit thicker. And I know this is a Posca pen, these light violet dots, because it was a bit dry, so it didn't, uh, I didn't get like a very, very opaque white color. And I think there might be a bit of gel pen here on the nose and maybe here on the eyelashes, but I'm really not sure. So forgive me if I'm giving you inaccurate information. I just can't remember, but I know there was, there was a very thin white marker involved. So that's this one. Okay, so this is something really quick with, again, watercolor and a brush pen. And it's, it wasn't quite successful. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's, <laughs> it's a good portrait by any means, but it was just a quick sketch. And this is an interesting experiment. So it has several, several layers. First, these white ornaments that you see uh, in the background of the red watercolor, that is white, uh, white pastel, white wax pastel or crayon. And it acts as resist. So when you draw a design with a white crayon, it has to be a wax crayon, not oil crayon, not uh, soft, just wax. And then you paint over it with ink or watercolor. Then the design 
remains visible because the paint doesn't stick to it. The paint just goes away. It just uh, flows <laughs> back into paper. And then after that, you can, um, you know, lay on top of it and it's it remains like that. Okay, it does get faint a bit because you can't cover paper perfectly because crayon is not a very precise instrument and you can only get these kind of thick lines. And then over that, I did a layer of black ink and some more details with silver marker. So if I turn it like this, you can see that this uh, these ornaments here and here and here are a bit shiny. That's silver felt tip marker. Okay, and this is another experiment, both of these, I'm gonna, both of these are um, experiments with the same technique. Sorry, it takes a bit to focus, it's quite slow. So again, uh, I did these kind of ornaments with a wax crayon and here as well, but uh, here it didn't really catch so nicely. You can see, you can just barely see it. And I also used uh, colors that are way too faint to be visible. And here the colors are a bit more intense, but then I also went over it again and again, a couple of, added a couple of layers of crayon. So you can see the crayon is pretty shiny here, whereas the paint is dull. It's, uh, it's more matte. And I believe I was painting this on an airplane. I'm pretty sure I was doing this mid-flight. And these, again, I, I just wanted to see where I can take this whole crayon thing. So these are oil pastels and mm -hmm. it sort of kind of worked in a way, but then when I later tried it again in a different sketchbook, it didn't work at all. So it's a bit of hit or miss. And the designs aren't very pretty. And here I try to do something like, um, doing like a silhouette of a skeleton with a white crayon and then painting over that, but that didn't work. And then I tried drawing over that with a white gel pen. And so it looks like this. It's not very good, but... So what's interesting about this sketchbook is that I started off doing like really meticulous uh, studies, like studies of the city, of the seaside, of whatever, and then as time moved on, I went just full experimental and didn't bother too much with trying to draw what's in front of me. So here I have a couple of studies. I actually did another drawing of all these. Uh, I think the, these are supposed to be poppies, poppy flowers. So I did a full page of these for a project that I was working on. Um, but that this is just the trying to get a quick look before I use them on, the, on actual paper for, for my project. And the, these are just blobs of green watercolor paint. And then I went over that with a black brush pen and with white gel pen. But somewhere this white gel pen looks quite all right. Like you can see the white dots here and here, but here the white lines are just so very faint. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I guess you, have, you need to apply maybe several layers of this white gel pen in order for it to work. So that's also something that I learned while doing these things. Uh, these are just some experiments that I did on the beach. I didn't have any inspiration for what to draw. I didn't want to draw like a bunch of trees around me. I didn't feel like that. And so I went just doing some washes and, and sprays and some circles. And these are not even the colors that I would say are my favorite to use, but I just wanted to try something different. So I thought I was gonna come back to this and maybe add something here, it didn't happen. And these are very, very simple studies, again, from the Seaside 2017, this one. This one also 2017, so that's August. 
I think these were done on, on the same day. I think it says August the 18th here and here. And you can see the colors are pretty much the same. So I was probably just using the same, <laughs> the same palette for both. Again, very loose, very just trying to get the idea of the whole scene, not really doing it for the for accuracy. So there's not much to see when I put a close up. And here, the last one. Now the last one says 2017, but I know that it took me months to to finish this page because at first. It was again just some wet and wet uh, blue and red paint and I wanted to see what will happen when I kind of let these colors bleed into each other. Uh, so you can see it's not really, these two colors don't make a really nice violet so I learned that I need an extra color just for violet, just a true violet paint. But uh, what happened is that I wanted to do something on top of that but didn't know what and then I was kind of turning it around and turning it around and trying to see something in it that I could maybe turn into a figurative drawing because I didn't want to just do doodles and what I saw was a silhouette like the face of a lady. I think this whenever there's a triangular thing poking out. It looks like a nose to me, so that kind of reminds me of a face. And then there's kind of a long neck going into her cleavage. And then here I even had like a waist. I mean, this was not intentional at all. This just happened with when I was brushing watercolor all over it. But I think it it's really lucky how, how things have been arranged in such a way that I can kind of see this, uh, this silhouette of a lady. And of course, it's not a perfect silhouette. I would have drawn it better if, if I was actually aiming for that. But we have to realize that this is it's just an accident. So we're just working with what I already had and I didn't fix the watercolor at all. I just left it the way it was. Oh, I just used a pen to to just draw the features and, and do those, these little curls and and the clothing and that's it. So with that last drawing we're gonna finish up this sketchbook flip and I'm gonna share some other sketchbooks really soon because I have a couple of that I've finished recently. So. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your patience. It was a really long video, I know, and I ramble a lot. I apologize for that. I really can't help it, <laughs> but uh, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless.